I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church, right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here on what's happening in our neighborhood. And today, my special guest is Mr. Joseph Tulu. Eatman, welcome, Tulu. <laughs> How you doing, real? I, I got to call you Tulu because that, that's what everybody knows you by. That's it. That's hey, it. hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. First of all, my name is Joseph Tulu Eaglin Sr., number two on the ballot, uh, two for Tulu. Uh, <laughs> second of all, I'm a 37-year member of the ILA and worked at the Port of Beaumont since May 5th, 1982. I am currently the president of International Longshoremen's Association, Union Number 1316. I've been president for 20 years. Wow. Right. Uh, several elections. I've only had one candidate in 20 years to run against me, and he voted for me. So, <laughs> Hold on, Tulu. Hold on. He ran against you but voted for you. <laughs> definitely. I said he just didn't want to see my name on the ballot unopposed. So, so eventually he voted for me. Uh, I've been doing the business of the president job for, like I said, 20 years prior to that. I was the business agent for the union. Uh, I've been attending port commission meetings for at least 16 years. I want to say, venture to say, closer to 18. Mm -hmm. But immediately after I was elected president, we saw the need to stay connected with the port commissioners because a lot of times their decisions involve the uh, union. So I've been in attendance for approximately 18 years. Wow. So why are you running for the port commissioner? Well, because after the amount of time I've spent going to the commissioner's meetings, I feel I have the most experience and the most knowledge about where the port is heading, uh, the direction. I know the, the needs of the port. Uh, also, by being a union president, we directly employ people from the community. It's not like we're a company coming in from out of town and right. putting people to work. We directly employ our local community on the Port of Beaumont. So I think that I know the future of the port. I know the necessities to involve the community a little more than what they are currently. The growth of the port is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And right now we're landlocked on, I'd say, the south side of the port, which they've been purchasing several properties. And I see the growth coming. It's going to be an industrialized area because what the port is not buying mobile is. Wow. So the future of the port is, is very good. I mean, and I've been there this long. I feel like I can continue the growth. By being there and involved in it, seeing where we can make decisions to vastly improve the socioeconomic value of the port to the community. You know, most people who are watching <laughs> don't, don't probably don't know the economic impact the port has on the city of Beaumont. Right. We're number one in the United States wow. in military. We're number two in the world in military cargo handling, wow. second to Saudi Arabia, because that's the only inlet that the U.S. uses into the Middle East. Uh, also, during the 80s and the early 90s, we uh, had the privilege of saying we were the number one bag put in the world. And through the years, you know, I've watched, like I said, the development of port. We switched over into a less physical port. Right now, we're currently handling a bag ship. Uh, that was built on the backs of the longshoremen wow. in the local area. So all the reputation of the port is basically based on the involvement of the community and local hiring practices that we utilize through the ILA. Wow. Uh, substantial income, you know, uh, it's not a 40 hour a week job, but for a person that has another entity to make money, like you say they contractors or construction workers or lawn care, whatever it is, they find the resource to come to the union hall when they have their off days right, right. and seek employment and get employed and make a, a decent living and help, you know, supplement the income. Yeah, right. Supplement the income. So so what, what are the biggest challenges you feel are facing the port right now? Uh, the biggest thing I, I see right now, we got to rebuild a, a dock that was recently washed off into the river. <laughs> and uh, I was very instrumental uh, in 
and obtaining this $85 million bond election. Wow. I had to get out and, and prod some people and explain Pound to them. Pound of Right, the NAACP, the Black Ministers Union, uh, different entities that I had to go out and get them to understand why this bond election was so important because it's, once again, it affects the community. There's a dock that we cannot utilize until we rebuild it that could birth three ships. Wow. You know, and that's substantial because the military calls on the port quite often. We have other vessels that be scheduled. Sometimes they have to sit out in the Gulf and wait till we handle other cargoes before they're allowed to come up the river. So now how long will it take to rebuild that dock? Um, right now, I think they're looking at maybe two to three years. Wow. They're, they're doing the, the, the groundwork right now. It may not take that long. Uh, I don't have my notes in front of me with with the schedules are, okay. but I've been there instrumental in, in listening to where we are, where we're heading. Uh, right now, they're, they're getting ready to demolish certain sections of that dock and then stabilize the under uh, pavement or the, 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 should I say, the dirt, the soil, yeah, yeah. whatnot, and start putting in the structure to actually sustain the, uh, the dock. Also, they're increasing the PSI, uh, as opposed to what it used to be back when it was built way back uh -huh. in the day. So now, when you say PSI, pounds per square inch, okay, and basically okay. the actual cargo that can be on top of the dock and be moved around up there safely. Now, aren't they finna dig out uh, 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 portions? Yeah. They're gonna dig out, and then that's when they'll start putting the stabilization down and the necessary. Uh, beams and structures that got to go with cement pillars, should I say, yeah. to uh, support the actual dock. Okay. So, so how, how is your campaign going? I mean, I mean, this is, this is something more than the president of the union. I mean, this is for a totally. poor commission. Commissioner. Totally. It is a challenge. <laughs> um, um, time locked. Like I said, I almost <laughs> forgot about this today. If my alarm hadn't went off, I was on my way out the door to do other another, things, huh? yeah, another job. You know, I, I stay busy with the music industry. Um, I have my own lawn service, sound company, studio, uh, and the presidential duties. We're in the middle of uh, some other legal affairs with uh -huh. the union, so I'm getting emails. I'm getting told to come here. I got to be here, be there. And it's getting to the point, you know, I'm doing everything myself. Right, right, right. I'm my campaign manager. I'm my, uh, my trustee for my own <laughs> campaign. Uh, and it's just wild. Uh -huh. it's, it's like crazy. Wow. So, so if you were to talk to the people directly right now, what would you tell them uh, uh, about Joseph Tulu Eaglin running for port commissioner? First and foremost, there's nobody that's running for this position has the experience, the knowledge, the wherewithal that the port business does. Uh, there are uh, new companies coming into the port, and one company in particular, Allegiant, uh, we play for their, well, we play for Jefferson Enterprises uh -huh. uh, Christmas party last year, so I got to rub elbows with some of the people that's <laughs> actually putting this money back into the Port of Beaumont uh, and capital improvements and the different things. Uh, Legion is now getting ready to start uh, their business at the uh, Trinity Island that they recently leased and it's a, a huge facility. And there's also future goals to maybe put a dock uh, there to sustain roll on, roll off type cargoes for chemical plants, which involves painting and wow. other things that a legion will be embarking upon once it's done. And then maybe the port will be able to, you know, co-partnership with them and build docks that maybe down the future we could utilize for roll-on, roll-off type cargo where the dock is right there at a the barge or something. Mm -hmm. We just roll it wow. on. You know, I was, I was, I was surprised when I, I was looking at the financial port for the, for the port financial mm -hmm. report for the port, uh, that over $300 million of mm -hmm. assets are controlled by the port commissioners. Right. That's the major role of a port commission is to oversee the, the monies coming and going, what they're spending money on, what are the projections. Yeah, and yeah. 
uh, I'll tell you, there's probably no industry in this area that operates like the Port of Beaumont. Chris Fisher has a phenomenal staff. I've been there with him through the years. I've seen the people come and go, different jobs changing. And it's like once he, somebody leaves, somebody else steps in and yeah, keeps next the ball rolling. <laughs> I mean, Bill Carpenter was very instrumental for many years. Uh, before I think I started, uh, Bill Carpenter was there. Uh, as the, uh, he was the terminal manager at one point, uh -huh. and then he, been, he ended up being the assistant port director, which he did a phenomenal job. Through the years, like I said, I've known several people coming and going. I've watched the growth. I've watched the the input of the staff. So far as the, you know, all aboard is a magazine right. for the Port of Beaumont. It gives you an overview. Not many people probably know about it, but if you want to stay in touch with the port yeah. and stay in tune with what's going on, all aboard is the magazine that you could get. Uh, and it's, it's amazing, man. I, I mean, I was I was totally. Uh, we had uh, Fisher uh, Fisher on here on the show once before to right. talk about the economic impact right. that that port brings into the city of Beaumont, and it Definitely. is phenomenal. Yes, it is. Uh, some of the jobs pay as much as thirty five dollars an hour straight time pay and time and a half and overtime uh, benefits package once you've attained. A status where you can work on a regular basis and maintain thirteen hundred dollars. We have a hundred percent insurance, that is phenomenal. Wow. Uh, we have different levels of uh, pay and economic imprint right here in the community. I mean, uh, I've been involved in, like I said, the ILA for thirty-seven years. Wow. Uh, uh, before I went to college, I was in college, uh -huh. straight A student. Yeah, dropped out to pursue a longshore industry career because that's what my dad yeah. was. Yeah. My grandfather was a longshoreman. They both retired uh, from ex eventually from the Port of Beaumont. So my knowledge is a little different from the candidates that's running against yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, you got hands on, huh? Right, and the fact that I know probably more than most I've noticed in the campaign, uh, some people are starting to learn uh, what the port does, where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, where it's at, huh? <laughs> yes, I was actually made to, uh, by Chris Fisher, take a tour of the port. I'm like, what are you finna show me, a new blade of grass? What, what's really happening? I mean, I've been here all this time, but like right now, we've just completed, well, port just completed an overpass on the Rose City side of the port, Orange County side. Uh -huh. And now we're finna expand and do another overpass project off of Carroll Street. Wow. That will allow for traffic to move back and forth into the port from that area. Okay. Uh, like I said, we're landlocked. There's the port has a lot of property already purchased. They're getting ready to develop and put some buffers up for sound and noise on the south side of the port gotcha. uh, for the community that's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's growing, busting at the seams. Uh, if we had more land, we could utilize more land. Yeah, We're handling yeah. uh, at the Port of Beaumont the largest wind energy windmill blades yeah. that has ever come to the United States. And we see those big old blades sitting That's out there. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We got some as large as a football field coming through now. Short, like wow. maybe a few meters short of a football field. Uh, it's just unique. That's amazing. Well, in our closing uh, moments, what would you like to leave with the people today? Look like that, that camera. Well, basically, if you want the best candidate for the position, you elect Joseph Tulu Eaglin, number two on the ballot. Uh, 37 years, 20 years as a union president, uh, better than 16 years of attending poor commission meetings on a monthly basis, as often as they attend, and they let me all attend. Uh, there's even been closed door sessions that I had to get run away from. You can't come to this one. I'm still here. I want to see what's happening, you know. So through the years, I think my involvement, my knowledge, my participation is probably undaunted by anybody that's running. So basically, if you want the best person for the job, the best candidate for the job, you'll vote 
and elect Joseph Tulu Eaglin, Sr., number two on the ballot. Well, listen, I want to thank uh, Tulu <laughs> for joining us today on what's happening in our neighborhood. And I want to thank you for joining us in, on what's happening in our neighborhood. And we will see you next time on our broadcast. Thank you.